We will have two spoken word artists who will entertain you with some so poems. The first of them is Jamal. He's going to talk about Islamophobia. Jamal, come over while we take our guests out. Rock the boat, man. All right. Salam alaikum, everybody. Uh, a little introduction. My name is Jamal. I'm 25 years old. Uh, my father immigrated here from Sudan in 1975 uh, to meet my white mother. And uh, that's part of the reason why I'm here today, by the grace of God. So a little bit of my passion is um, I write about issues that I see going on in the world, and I feel it. Um, so I just wanted to share this with you guys here today, and thank you for having me. Bismillah It's not my job to apologize for the lives that have been lost. It's not my fault Islamophobia, racism implemented by the system is clouding your thoughts. Make you think that willingly killing is winning when really it's sinning. It's not a representation of my religion, a misinterpretation that you've been given. You can take a look inside of my eyes and see where my ambition has been driven. But you're not going to see it on your TV. Please believe me, the people blinded like Stevie. As the media spreading that nonsense covered as logic is poison toxic, please don't watch it. Nothing but biased racist concepts. But you're not going to see it on your TV, so please believe me. News flash, 30 kids died out in Gaza. Does anybody really seem bothered? News flash, Syrian girl, she hasn't ate in weeks. I looked on social media, I didn't see a tweet. The orphans in Jerusalem, they started to weep. I looked on social media, I didn't see a tweet. I couldn't hear a peep. Man, I couldn't even sleep. But I'm not here to wake them. I'm just here to spread peace. Salam alaikum. But you're not going to see it on your TV, so please believe me, the people blinded like Stevie. Because you see, the essence of Islam is not the presence of a bomb. We're taught to be pious, not biased. Spread love, not riots. Worship in the law the highest. But brothers let go of their deen on a road for rocks and jewelry, shiny things. But we forget that that's the regime of Iblis. A'udhu billahi min shaytan al-rajim. Ya khwanna innahu lakum adum mubin. Ya Allah, ahdina ala salatun mustaqeem. Ameen. So I'm just here to spread the mission. I'm not a radical. I just want people to listen. We have Brother Reed. Please give a hand of applause to Brother Reed, inshallah. Um, before I begin my poem, I would really want to ask a big favor if you guys could please follow our YouTube channel. Um, it's called True Intentions. It's a very powerful YouTube channel that would very, be, very be greatly appreciated. My name is Walid. My poem is called Let's Be Real. It's very self-explanatory, so I'm just going to get right into it. I refuse to be closed-minded, closed-lipped, and closed eyelids. When they say they preach the truth, they really keep the truth silent. Preach a whole nother truth like the truth was two-sided. I guess only God and time can really tell who's guided. And I can't call myself innocent if I'm not protecting the innocent. And I can't be on the side of people who randomly select me an enemy. I could do what they do, but it's just a waste of my energy. You should see how they get on TV just to bash my identity. They make a mockery of it. They make a bargain for it. And we get stuck in society, we become a target for it. That's not metaphoric. Cops are shooting us, we literally a target for it. Then they sell us cheap hope, like what, should we shop at Target for it? We the Muslim Ummah is literally on our knees telling the whole world we have the answers that you need, but they treat us like we need them. It's like they build a house and we pay rent. And that's not right if you ask me. That's not life if you ask me. So let's build our own empires, use our own resources, and they'll come knocking on our doors and we're gonna be like, don't ask me. Because we gave you all those years, the months and the past weeks, but you wanted to crawl to us when your strength was so weak. But we follow the Sunnah, so let them in. Tell them, say, La ilaha illallah to save yourself from self destruction and a path of corruption. Tell them to follow the Sunnah because the path is constructive from the way we do business and the way we treat our own mothers. People keep asking me who I'm voting for. Truth be told, I could care less who's in the White House if it's the same house rules. They act like all sheep, but inside they all wolves. Their stories is half biased. The sources is all false, so either I'm going deaf or these people are all fraud. Talking about make America great again. Make America great again, more like have another Great Depression. This is a war on classism and skin complexion. Let's be real, because everyone getting affected. Assalamu alaikum, everybody. Alhamdulillah. Um, I was asked here to do um, some spoken word. Um, on my Muslim American experience. And this is a poem I wrote a while back about something that was happening in my community that is representative of how I feel as a Muslim in America today. So 
So I'd like to share it with you all, inshallah. It's in the air. What they don't say, no better than to say, well, most of the time. It makes the air thick and leaves stains on prayer mats. It follows you, drives you until you're out of the room because that's the point. It's everywhere, except in writing, except in the words you try to find when they ask you, sister, why don't you come to the masjid anymore? And so to them, it may as well not exist. For those who do not understand, I will not so I will not enter spaces I do not feel welcome because my mama taught me how to pick my battles. Lord knows I have plenty. And fighting for room to exist in a space meant for me is not one I will subject myself to. I cannot educate you from beneath your boot on my neck because I get it at the mall, during lecture, during my entire life, and I just wanted to come home. I just wanted to come back. But when you reach out to someone and they tell you that you should have prayed harder, there really isn't much else to say. And so we build walls. Walls to keep from getting hurt when a brother or sister reminds you you are no brother or sister to them. And eventually, they will call those walls erected in self-defense and attack, hostile. It seems this ummah is under the impression that black Muslims should respond to racism with their arms wide open, should respond to misogyny noir with their arms wide open. These black bodies can take a beating. Y'all made sure of that. But how much hate can we internalize before we turn bitter, turn hard, turn inside ourselves only for you to read scar tissue as an attitude? Uh, you think our laughter is obnoxious. I think it's defiant, like the way a flower blooms through sidewalk cracks in spite of concrete. Happiness shouldn't have to be an ambition, but it is. When you look at a little girl that looks like you did and worry about the last time it was that someone called her beautiful, it is when you were told not to play in the sun too long as a child. It is when by the age of two, you are able to differentiate which hair is good. Spoiler alert, it's not yours. It is when you try to squeeze your hips into the loosest skirt on the rack and then scratch at your skin because nothing fits right on it. It is when a tweet about uplifting black women is suddenly about reverse racism and lack of POC solidarity. It is when you turn to your black brothers for help and leave with aches in all the places you supported their struggle. It is when you are everybody's last choice. And don't tell me that we're one ummah. I'm not divisive for pointing out the fault lines that already existed. Don't tell me we're one ummah. If you can remember the last black person to die unarmed on your timeline, as if black death isn't important to the Muslimun. Don't tell me we're one ummah. If you have no words for the Somali mother who may have to Take her child to learn under surveillance that will criminalize them for practicing the same faith that you share in this very city. You want to be one ummah? Act like it. Understand my hesitation to trust when every culture, every tongue has a different way to say black ain't beautiful, ain't worthy, ain't intelligent, and then you have the audacity to ask why we sit together at the lunch table as if you didn't put us there. But this black skin has its own kind of freedom. And when we flock together, watch if you don't stop to hear the melanin sing. I love my black sisters, and you call it exclusion. I love myself, and you call it ego. There is revolution in my confidence. I understand why you tried to destroy it, because black women are magic. Our fire and the hearth that nurtured it are more than you bargained for. We are more than the broken you expected. Thank you, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum.